The majority of my trust issues stem from a traumatic Chinese finger trap incident of my youth. And ever since then, I've been super wary of clipping anything onto my fingers. But if you've watched any of the more recent videos and live streams, you may have seen that I've been trying to incorporate a thumb pick into my playing, all right? Recently, I saw uh, one of my favorite guitar players, Adrian Linker, live, and she was just like so nasty with the thumb pick. I was like, I gotta figure out how to use this. So I'm gonna go through a few different guitar tunings and some different ways you can incorporate a thumb pick. You don't need a thumb pick to follow along with these videos, but I'm gonna be talking about why you might want to use it. But again, you can recreate pretty much all these patterns just with a bare exposed thumb, but that doesn't seem classy. And this video is sponsored by Black Mountain Picks. That's the thumb pick that I want to use. So do I even have the old thumb pick? I remember when I first, I, I've tried, I've dabbled in thumb picks before. A lot of you may have seen this one. This is a Dunlop one, right? So I've tried this before and it doesn't really fit great and it slips a lot and I just never really vibed with it. But the Black Mountain ones are great because it has a spring-loaded thing on here. It's just essentially a regular pick that uses a spring to attach to your thumb, right? So there's no, it doesn't ever go loose. And you can always use it as just an ex, a regular pick. So one of the most fun things that I've been having is just learning how to do different finger style things in different tunings. So I thought I'd just show you some of the stuff that I've been practicing. And then uh, maybe if you want to expand what you're doing, you can practice along. And I've been super impressed with these. Uh, I will link you in the description if you want to get one of these. Highly recommend them. And I'm going to be using it for the purposes of what we're doing. All right. So first of all, I'm going to rock out the Martin D35. This is going to be an alternate tuning. It's just tuned down a step. So it's tuned to D instead of E, A, D, G, B. E, are those the strings on a guitar? Everything's tuned down a step. So instead of an E, it's a D. Instead of an A, it's a G, so on and so forth, right? Now, the first thing that I really noticed that was exceptional about this, but not the first thing I practiced, was playing something like this. I like about this specifically on a dreadnought style guitar like this it has like a super deep low end where when you drive it with just a pick you kind of lose I think the articulation of what really makes it sound great to, to really balance it out what I'm doing is on the downstrokes from the E A and D string here I'm just kind of getting the thumb pick and then the higher three strings I'm getting my pointer finger to kind of come down right like And I get like a separation from this using a combination of the thumb pick and my pointer finger. I'm just doing these really cool uh, open major seven chord voicings. If you want to follow along, it's open E, seven, A, six, D, and eight, G. Everything else is open, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then two frets back. So I've been really kind of like enjoying the balance of this. Okay, but that's, you know, I don't even know if that's, that's not technically even finger style. So the first finger style pattern we're gonna do is gonna sound like this. Okay, so this is a song that I play uh, live. It's one of my originals called Parador. And uh, I think it utilizes what a lot of people think of when they think of like finger picked guitar that isn't finger style, right? So the strength of standard guitar tuning, or again, D standard, is the root note of your chords is usually gonna be on the low E or the A string, okay? So we're gonna start with a C minor seven chord voicing. It could be any chord voicing that you have rooted on the E or the A string. And I'm just borrowing the fourth fret and my ring finger is getting the sixth fret of the D string and my middle finger is getting the fifth fret of the B string, right? So there's my chord, okay? There's, there's, there it is, pick. Now again, with my thumb, it just sounds like this.
So first of all, you'll notice that I'm gaining volume when I use the thumb pick. And I'm also getting a little bit more of a percussive dynamic, okay? So what I'm doing here, with the, with the thumb pick, I'm striking the root note, which is the A string. And then with my fingers, my fingers are lined up on the D, G, and B strings, right? So I'm getting, and then together. So thumb, fingers, and then my favorite thing about this style is when I come into the string set, that percussive hit that I'm getting with the pick back into the string sets is so much more even and so much more of a level dynamic than if I use just my just my, my fingernails, right? So you can kind of get I feel like the the dynamic of the, the hits is too loud when I do it that way. Now when I have the thumb pick I feel it all kind of levels it out. And then the percussive nature of how I'm playing the chords seems to just be more even, right? So I'm gonna move this around to other chords. I'm gonna go from here to B major seven to A major seven, okay? So it's basically, a, there's that C sharp minor we talked about, then B major seven, two on the A string, four D, three G, four B. Then that same shape, two frets back. And again, the way I'm doing it, let's just talk about that A major seven right there. Root, chord, hit, all together, right? Root, chord, hit, both, chord, hit. And then maybe at the end, I'll even get another one with my fingers. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, now again, a nice thing about having a pick actually on your thumb is when I get to the end of this line, so I'll do the whole thing. The articulation of a clean pick sweep at the end as compared to a thumb which again is more mellow maybe that's what you want but again I really think again I'm not playing it any harder I, pro I promise you I'm not playing it harder it's just the volume from having a piece of plastic raked along just I, I, I think just sounds better right so again, really learn to love this thumb pick, uh, especially for the strumming. One person that asked in an early video where I was using this, kind of practicing, trying to get better at it, is if you can do upstrokes. Yes, you totally can. See how it doesn't move off my finger? Again, I probably wouldn't use it like that where I'm not you where I'm not holding it at all. If I'm gonna go full on strumming, I'm probably actually gonna hold it like a pick. But again, just to show, demonstrate. It's not gonna move or fall off, right? So again, this is what I would say is kind of my go-to way of playing finger style, which is like, if it, is it finger style? I don't know, whatever. It says I'm striking a root note with my thumb, with the thumb pick, and then having the chord played with these three fingers. And again, just the way that the guitar is set up where you're rooting on the E or the A string, and then the chord can be like the D, G, and B string is a great way to do it, right? But again, this is just open, or this is just standard tuning down a step. I also want to do this uh, with an open tuning on a guitar and then do a different pattern to switch it up. So let's get to that one next. All right, next tuning, we're keeping it in the Martin family, rocking the Martin Streetmaster. We're going to Dad Gad. Love this tuning. So basically we have a D string, A, D, and G are the same. And then so D, A, D, G, A, D. If you can phonetically spell Dad Gad, you know 
how to tune your guitar to dadgad. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is the thumb is just gonna go steady between what are now the D strings, right? So D to D. Just back and forth, right? So we kinda get this octave jump, okay? Now, the cool thing about dadgad specifically is We've got, you know, if we if we still think of just this being as like, all right, this is setting the tone for just some kind of D-ness happening, right? How we dress that up with the fingers is going to depend on what kind of key or scale that you want to use. So if I'm thinking of the G string, all right, in the key of D, D, E, F sharp, G, it's the fourth mode. So we could play all the notes in the key of D starting at a G, and it would look like this. We have G, open. Two, four, six. That's what's special about that. Seven, nine, eleven, twelve. So again, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. Okay? Now, if we were just to play these notes uh, kind of in the context, right? It almost sounds like the pick is drowning out the high end here, right? So what we can do, and what I think is a really cool sound, is if you palm mute the actual bass strings of the guitar, right? So I'm gonna kind of do chop the bridge right there, and then now, I'm getting a much more muffled response from just the bass strings, but, you'll see my, my hand is kind of coming up to let that G string ring out. So now. So again, that was just me just kind of randomly noodling around your butt. I think that's like a really cool thing that you can kind of get that. The nice thing about Dad Gat having that D to D octave jump muted a little bit. And then even if you want to like a This just keeps going super steady, right? To the point that you don't even have to think about it. And then you can really just kind of focus on what what you want to really kind of focus on, on the G string, right? So maybe I'll just take, uh, I like that interval, that sixth fret to seventh fret. And then I also like the 11th fret to the 12th fret, right? Those little half step jumps. My pointer finger is just responsible for just the G string now. And then as you kind of like lay off the bridge, you can kind of get a little more tone from the lower strings, right? So again, that's just uh, one super simple alternate tuning. And even if, like in that example, I didn't even use the open A and D strings up top to make chords. So in that purpose, if you're just using the low four strings, you could just do the same thing in drop D. But we're gonna do one more alternate tuning. All right, so next one is gonna be just open G tuning. Uh, now sticking in the Martin family, Martin GPCPA4. Uh, what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be a D, a G, a D, and another G. All right, so D, G, D, G. And then the B string is gonna stay as it is because it's in a G, a G major chord. And then the high string is down to a D. Okay, so you just strum the whole thing, and that's a G chord. All right. Now, 
What I want to talk about are the D strings and the G strings, which is essentially every string except for uh, the the one right here, right? The B string. Now, uh, the relationship between D and G is really significant in this key because you can actually use pretty much the exact same frets, okay? The only difference between G's spot, interval-wise, in the key of G, right? We started with uh, the G, which is like this string right here, so... G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, right? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. The only difference from D spot, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, is that seventh note. G, uh, D has a flat seven in the key of G. If that didn't make any sense for you, maybe just a shape-based approach will do it, right? That means you can play the exact same thing on both of these strings. Uh, let's just take the lowest two strings, right? Open and open, two and two, four and four, five and five, seven and seven, nine and nine. Here's where we have to separate. Okay, so again, G string goes to the 11th fret, D string goes to the 10th fret. But what I wanna do, I wanna take actually what I'm thinking of is the second and third string down, and then just kind of playing these shapes. But then doing it with the thumb pick, and then kind of adding your fingers in there too, right? Okay, so this is gonna be the pattern that I'm gonna work on, all right? So the downstroke on the first thumb pick is gonna be just that low uh, D string, right? And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna aim for maybe both of these two strings here, right here. The G and the other D string, right? Okay, so I've got down, then up, pointer finger on the, what I'm thinking of is, you know, it's, it's the G string still, right? And then down the next two strings, and then up on B. One and two and three and four and. So now we, when we start putting shapes on it, like an E minor shape. And then remember, I can move this a whole step down. A half step down. A whole step down. Another whole step down. And then again, now we're gonna go to the 11th and the 10th fret. Okay, so remember. And again, that's all you have to think of as far as like the shape moving, but it's a really fun way to kind of practice whatever finger style thing that you're doing. And that was just a really easy one where it's like one and two and, right? So. Thumb pointer, thumb middle. Back. this specific guitar it just uh, it just seems a little more balanced because it is a little bit of a brighter sound so getting the G and B strings with your uh, pointer fingers just really levels it out that's another one that I've been practicing a lot uh, where it's like one two and four and okay so that's like thumb on the one count then the d and b strings on the two count together one two three and four and okay so one two three pointer finger and of three four middle finger and of four
then if you want to palm mute it, you can get more of uh, that dynamic sound. I think it's just like it's such a fun way to kind of practice so again I've only really been at it for you know a couple weeks with the thumb pick but I really think it's something that I'm gonna start incorporating into uh, a lot of my playing just because like I said there are certain things that it just really helps even out and uh, especially just having the opportunity to without having to like maybe hold a hybrid pick which I was never really that great at where you just kind of hold a pick and then still play with your fingers it's great not having to worry about it right if you want to go into a strumming. And then be able to go back. behind it is just that steady thumb pick which again having a pick do that you get such a, a, a steady kind of pulsing sound which uh again i'm still getting used to but i definitely think there's a lot of utility to this so thank you black mountain picks for turning me on to this and sponsoring this video uh there's definitely going to be more coming soon let me know uh if there's a particular tuning or technique that you like and uh, maybe I can do like a follow-up video or something just trying to get better at it and different patterns and stuff you can do within it but uh yeah thanks for coming along on the ride with me and we'll talk to you soon thanks a lot